Any redirect? Thank you. Just a minute. We have no redirect of Dr. Hassinger. Thank you, Dr. Hassinger. Thank you very much. And ladies and gentlemen, I just want to thank you sincerely for your patience. There are some housekeeping matters that we need to take care of, but I'm concerned about doing it without so many people absent. So, yes. I just wanted to make an objection okay. on the record that this hearing has lasted. It has extended beyond 11 hours. It doesn't allow for all of the parties to fully participate in the hearing. And I just want to make that objection that this has gone on for over 11 hours. We've made accommodations for this witness. And I'm not sure if this means that we will accommodate other requests for other witnesses. Um, we've done it for UH, if that means we're gonna be in the habit of doing that for everyone, which maybe we will. But um, I'm gonna put that objection in because we're all tired at this point. And formal objection, please. Thank you, Ms. Case. So we'll take up on Monday, first thing, the idea of who gets to object when. And it has been thus far my very general practice to allow the objections to, to um, be addressed by the person offering the witness. Of course, we've only had one entity offering witnesses, but that was a practice I intend to follow throughout. And then you should be able to, um, and then the responses to the objections would come from whoever is doing the cross-examination. So, um, Mr. C Mr. Fergustrom, did you want to speak to that? Not, I'll repeat it again on Monday because so many people are not here. Actually, because you're saying, um, I do have something to say about Monday. Um, well, let me finish my thought on okay. this first. But, but I'll, I'll let you speak, no problem. And um, so that, that, I want to address that. I'm, I think everyone knows that that's kind of the general practice. And on my, in a week, couple of weak moments, I allowed persons to interrupt a cross-examiner. And uh, you know, I think that's very difficult when you have so many parties. We're like at 20 or more actually now. So I think we have to follow this process and, and, and until you know, we see, and if there's something that has to come up, We'll deal with it. Okay, Mr. Sinkin, I know you had some issues with that, but I think you were able to see today how during your cross-examination you could actually deal with the issue that bothered you at the time someone else was cross-examining. So the only time that won't work is if for some reason it's the people behind you. So at that point we'll have to deal with it, but I really think that we have to be efficient and this is the best way. So um, I'm going to explain it again on Monday. Um, the other thing I was going to say is I handed out the calendars. Those are the dates that have been given to us by the Nani Loa as being available. Okay, I'm not promising we're going to do it. I'm putting it out to you folks so that you can see what our options may be. And the first thing we have to do is figure out your witnesses, who's going to come when, that sort of thing and see if we can't make some accommodations. It's not reasonable as we can see already that everybody attend every hearing. I mean, uh, that would be ideal and everyone said they would, but you know, folks have been making decisions, alternative decisions and I, uh, I understand that. So if you can please over the next couple, three days, talk about, even if we have to take witnesses out of order, that's fine. 